all right hey what is up guys welcome back to my channel um, so today I'm gonna be uh, riding the expulse and uh, taking it into town I'm gonna meet a friend who uh, runs a, a bike part shop uh, his name is Gunjan I'm gonna pick up air filters uh, uni air filters for the RD350 um, they had I had just picked up a new pair less than maybe a month or two ago and uh, unfortunately the thing is I don't use the RD350 very often uh, and these rats just came in and they chewed up the filters right to the like the kind of frame of the filter they chewed up all of the sponge and the rubber <laughs> so basically it became a big hole with uh, zero filtration properties <laughs> and I had to like uh, just junk them so I've been asking uh, Gunjan for these filters uh, for since then, since ever since I found pieces of the filter sponge strewn around my backyard, and uh, yeah, uh, he just I just called him today to check, and uh, my man is like very resourceful, so he's got stock of them. Um, I'm also running a new mic setup. I've just plugged in the new Sony stereo mic, so I hope. Uh, audio quality is even better than it was uh, on yesterday's video um, yeah and uh, I had a small mishap on the expulse uh, kind of little funny but a little painful also um, so this side stand if you look at it it's really tall and it props the bike up like uh, right now this there's a slope here so it's not really upright but if the ground was like absolutely level it would almost be like this on the side stand and there's very easy for it to tip over so yesterday I was trying to sh shoot a sh short video uh, in the night and I turned on the ignition on this side on I think I turned on the ignition from yeah from this side uh, yeah I turned on the ignition from this side because this is where the side stand is and uh, and I was standing in front of the bike to show you the headlight, I mean the LED, the, the daytime running lamp. So you can see the Hero branding, it's like an H, it's really cool actually. And it's brighter than my RD350 headlight at idle. <laughs> and uh, the whole bike just tipped over and like, uh, you know, I watched it happen in front of me and as it was falling, I. I kind of tried to save it and put my leg in between and so I've got scratches on my shin <laughs> and uh, yeah there's there's a little bit of scuffing here and a little bit of scratches here but other than that it's fine this whole panel uh, is plastic so this is like this whole thing can be changed uh, yeah this bike is like really rough and tough as you already know um, that's a tail light so um, it's not a deal breaker just gotta be careful when you park this bike because of this this long ass stand right uh, almost upright and yeah so that's that and that footage happened to be I, I happened to be recording at that time I showed it to my wife and she had a good laugh I don't intend on posting it <laughs> well let's see uh, I've saved it for posterity all right so uh, shutting my visor now and we are rolling we're heading into town like I said uh, a lot of people were asking me uh, on my YouTube channel in the comments section um, if it's easy to handle the expulse in uh, you know slow moving traffic so the time right now is 5 30 it is kind of uh, peak hour traffic not really I mean 6 o'clock is when it actually starts but it's not a bad time to uh, give it a go uh, and you will see uh, how this bike handles through uh, kind of peak hour traffic Just taking the bad roads, yeah. Uh, 
I'm gonna go through Vanaswari You notice how much people have to slow down So uh, here's the thing I've noticed with this bike right and it's it's uh, in a city like India power is kind of immaterial especially if you're uh, riding is mostly through the city because uh, the city roads are so bad um, I have lived in a city like Bombay and I can tell you that the roads in Bombay are far far better than than Bangalore uh, not just the roads so the roads it has it has like a um, a kind of spiraling effect right if the roads are good uh, the traffic um, uh, follows rules but when the roads are like absolute crap it's like to it turns into total anarchy right so uh, I used to sail in the merchant navy and during that time I was living in uh, Bombay I call it Bombay because I mean that's how my folks refer to it uh, the old city right and uh, yeah when we were staying there uh, and I had my RX uh, my Karnataka registered RX that I used to get harassed by the cops uh, for because I mean I, I would stick out like a sore thumb with that registration right I mean it happens in Bangalore too where the cops harass people with out of state registration plates but um, and then you know the thing is if you catch someone so, so for example in Bangalore if you catch a person with a TN or a KL registered register plate right that's Tamil Nadu or Kerala um, that cop knows as like he's going to take a gamble and say hey this person is not a localite and he's not going to be able to speak Canada and he probably doesn't know too many people in the city so communication is going to be a problem cop gets to harass the guy this guy is going to the, the you know the, the 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 person who's being stopped is going to freak and say hey you know what I'm just going to pay you whatever you ask me versus say stopping a localite who probably have some connections here and who can if, if no connections at the very least he can talk in uh, Canada and he can he can argue and he can negotiate with the cop all right um, f and, and you know these cops have this tendency to show irritation and anger if you communicate uh, with them in Hindi so in Bangalore they, they get irritated if you talk in Hindi because that means you're a North Indian and you're imposing your North Indian dialect on our South Indian dialect I mean it's not entirely unfounded but I don't want to get into that right now um, and yeah and in, uh, or English so English means hey you're a rich dude you're a loaded guy right you have money <laughs> and in Bombay it's kind of the same where you are expected to speak Marathi so if you speak Marathi you can get away with quite a bit um, and if you don't then you know the cops are going to kind of roll call you we call it roll call here but it's kind of an extortion scene um, yeah and uh, uh, so I was talking about uh, roads and traffic right but the benefit of Bombay is that the roads the infrastructure, infrastructure there is like phenomenal compared to uh, Bangalore Bangalore has some of the worst infrastructure in um, in you know metro cities I, I I can't comment for other cities like Calcutta or uh, I don't know if Pune classifies the metro Pune is also uh, Pune is a small city but it's getting bad there too um, but uh, I don't think anything can get as bad as this city so uh, when it comes to so 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 I was talking about the spiral effect right of roads being if the roads are good um, uh, the travelers on that road are going to follow traffic rules it's it's a very simple kind of it's based on very simple logic right so the first rule of traffic is following a lane system because people have to take turns uh, now in Bombay when I lived there if you didn't follow a lane system you would stick out like a sore thumb if you cut across lanes and there be there be cops standing at the junction right at these turnings and if you cut across lanes you would stick out as a sore thumb as somebody who didn't know where they were going and they would immediately pull you over they would literally pull you over for cutting lanes right and then you have a K registered bike and all of that and like it all falls together right so that's the situation in Bombay and the reason why they can enforce something like that is because people there follow lanes they have like a fast lane they have like a slow lane 
um, there are signs way in advance telling you where you have to take a right where you have to take a left i have very rarely seen people in bombay blocking free left or free right turns and signals um, in bangalore it is the total opposite so first off in bangalore the roads are pathetic as you might have seen in my videos before so following lanes here and and the, and the roads are very narrow so there's there's really not much of a there's not really much of a segregation in lane uh, and even when the roads are broad because there are potholes that exist uh, you know there's going to be um, uh, it's going to be impossible to follow lanes so you will have people suddenly swerving to the left or suddenly swerving into your lane because they're trying to avoid a pothole and that causes accidents and there's and there is a there is an immense amount of pent up anger and frustration among uh you know uh, people who uh, drive or ride or uh, you know uh, among auto drivers and and danzo and swiggy guys and and office commuters and they just re taxi drivers right they just ready to pick up a fight um so um that's the situation in bangalore uh people don't follow lanes so so when you get to a traffic light since there are no lanes being followed and the traffic light has a free left you'll have like a you'll have like a auto or you'll have like bikes that will creep up right to the front they'll cross they'll cross the zebra cross they'll be on the zebra crossing ahead of the stop line you know and they'll be like you know all huddled up there blocking the free left and so what happens is the people who were supposed you know free flowing traffic that was supposed to take that left just get stuck and that then that builds up into a bottleneck um one way is for example this road this road that's going by you will see uh, uh at that flyover and uh, you saw you saw how broad the flyover road is right it's super narrow and what happens is people come from under the flyover through the road that's one way and I'll, I'll i'll probably show you that when i'm going back sometimes there are cops sometimes there are no cops and uh, most of the time there are no cops and when there are no cops there's a huge bottleneck that the traffic starting all the way from from here to the flyover because um what happens is these guys these car guys if it's a bike you know it's oh, i i i may have a soft corner for motorcyclists i mean you could say that but i personally believe that motorcyclists occupy less real estate on the road right so they take up less of space and they can squeeze through smaller gaps so and and they move pretty quickly unlike you know a car or a or a bus or a tempo or a goods carrier or something like that so um yeah uh what happens at that turn is that if you have these taxi drivers and you have these car guys who come who don't want to take uh, the slightly longer legitimate route and instead want to break the law and come down the one way to save some time uh, or save some gas i don't know what they're thinking but uh, yeah and they do that and uh, what then happens is they cause a huge traffic jam at the flyover itself because those cars can't take the u turn in once in a single attempt you know it's not a it's not it's not a wide enough turn so they've at least got to take a three point turn and in that three point turn every time if, you know whatever little gap you, they find motorcyclists are going to take it so this guy is going to basically be stuck blocking the flyover because he wanted to take uh, that route he wanted to break he wanted to come through the one way break the law cause inconvenience to everybody else just so that he can save some time and there'll be traffic piled up like all the way to the back right so that's just how it is uh kind of ranting uh i know but uh this is something that i've wanted to talk about for a while now uh about how see like you see this left do you see how many people have stopped this is a free left but there are so many people who stop all the way to that bit that i had to actually go off the road and you see the whole road is not paved there are paths that are not paved so people just just sit there if you're in a car you're not going to be able to go anywhere anyway so the benefit of being on a two wheeler in in a city in a chaotic traffic environment like this is that you at least get to move you know
Yeah, and and uh, last thing what I, uh, what I started telling you about with the expulse is that you will have. Uh, I was talking about power, right? And how power is uh, used is in uh, in an environment, an urban environment like this. So you could have a very powerful bike, right? I, I don't mean something that is like a top end kind of power, something that's super torquey with a lot of initial, uh, you know, pick up and acceleration and all of that. Well, what are you going to do with it if, if you don't have uh, suspension like like this, like literally off-road suspension? You're going to accelerate from one speed breaker to the next and you're going to have to brake. So while you may have a lot of power compared to my X-Pulse and you may out-accelerate me, you're going to have to stop at the next pothole or the speed breaker which is like 100% coming up in the next, like within the next couple of meters, right? Uh, and that's when I will I will not have to drop my pace so I can build my pace and just keep going because with the X-Pulse you don't need to stop for speed breakers and you don't need to stop for portals you can just stand and go through them without any without your body having to suffer and um, yeah that's the beauty of it <laughs> so yeah my shins hurting a little bit today because the this this stupid bike fell on me <laughs> and uh, yeah i hope i'm not injured a muscle but i have like a little bit of tightness and ache in my muscle maybe it'll go away in a couple of days if not i'll have to probably get it checked i i was this bike is not very light huh i mean it's lighter than the interceptor but it's not extremely light it's about 160 kgs which is actually on the heavier side for a 200 it's quite heavy if you think about it compared to like you know ktm off-road bikes and stuff uh, but yeah this is not really a performance bike so i guess that's okay The shop I'm going to is called Biker's Pit Stop. Um, they, uh, Gunjan has got a lot of uh, stuff for a lot of accessories, a lot of parts for a lot of bikes. So uh, at, at the time that I started, that I first started going to him was when I used to be on the two strokes and just have a lot of parts for the two strokes, a lot of carbs and you know carburetors, pistons, connecting rods and stuff like that uh, yeah and as you can see now I'm still going to pick up uh, air filters from him for uh, the RD um, I believe there is some other manufacturer that's coming to the market that with air filters that look exactly like the unis uh, but I, I don't want anything other than unis I, I strongly believe in that brand so we are going through the commercial street side of town Oops, the daisy. All right.
You see, there's a free left there. So what's happening? It's jammed. <laughs> and that's this is how it is. There are auto drivers here. Free left. You see, my friend. There's a free left. Okay. So in the meantime, I'm gonna put on Google Maps and see what's the shortest route I can take to the new shop. It's called Bikers. Fit stop. Yep. I should have probably taken the other side but Safari guy is like, uh, he's literally on a safari huh? Is he stopping to watch the wildlife? Not really sure But yeah There's also a lot of metro construction work happening in the city, which is again messed things up. Um, yeah, the city is constantly under development, something or the other always happening. So, if you, if in the, before this, if we went straight, we would hit Brigade Road. But right now it's blocked because they're kind of tunneling under there and they've blocked all of this. Can you see number metro barricades? Those cranes. Sky looks beautiful, huh? Hmm. That's Brigade Road, you can see Barton Center there. Big SUVs, how much they slow down, no? Rock Cafe used to be this pub called 180 Proof there. Then Shamali got shot and they shut it down. 
I guess we wasn't 180 proof after all. So now, oh, I could go straight, huh? See, see, this guy comes from the right, on the left, and takes the right. All. This is Cabin Park here, all of this, nice and cool, oops, this is, I'm actually giving you a tour of Nama Uru, Coffee Day building, Pantirva Stadium, this is where we have the RD350 meets on the other side, uh, St. Joseph's Indian High School, this is the stadium. This is the school property. And then that is what used to be Vital Malia Hospital. With Vijay Malia going broke and turning into a fugitive. It's been renamed and taken over by somebody else. Good hospital though. Better than what it used to be after the takeover. So you can see athletes practicing. A much nicer to take than going to uh, through Lanford Town, I guess, because that is like super chocolate block under Richmond Town Flyover. Wow, there's some big high rise coming up here, no? Here's Biker's Pit Stop Alright, put my bike in <laughs> This sticker adds 10 bhp ah. huh, Seems like a good spot Uh, don't fall at least that's the Lanford Town KTM showroom there I'm not sure if you can see it
All right, all right, all right. Put the chambers. Mini bike. Hi, Gunjan. Gunjan. Uni filters, kaha hai? Huh? Uni filters. Here's the uni filters. Original. Car sticker is not in there. ओरिजिनल नहीं लग रहा भैया नहीं भाई मुझे मालूम है कौन किसका फिल्टर मुझे मालूम है ये क्या है जमान कैमरा सब डराना है ऑल राइट डन डन समथिंग ब्रो व्हाट्सअप से हाई